Hi there, this is Jeanette for Whimsy Stamps. Today I have a new card to share with you featuring some of the new products from Whimsy Stamps. We'll be coloring up this sweet little bunny and I'll be sharing how I create a sort of very soft fur effect with my coloration. And I'll be sharing how I created the very soft background color using multiple Prismacolor pencils. So we're gonna get started. I've already stamped the image and now I'm going to start applying the color to it. I'm going to be using all grays and I'm just sort of making little flicking um, motions with my marker and adding tiny little strokes all around the surface of the fur. And I'm doing this with my C1 marker. And once I have it all covered, I'm then going to go ahead with C3 and start adding more flicks. And I think I'm going to zoom in here for you. There we go. So you can see it a little bit better. So you can see it's just tiny little flicks, um, very sort of random in that they're not the same size and I'm not being too precise. I'm just making sure it looks a little texturized. Now because I zoomed in, sometimes it's going to be a little out of screen because it's a little harder to um, keep it in the screen. I move my paper around a lot when I'm coloring. So you can see I'm just adding these tiny little flicks. Then what I'll do is I'll go back in with a C5. Now I'm gonna be adding less lines here. You can see that I'm not adding as many. And again, I'm varying the length, but this adds so much definition. Um, without making the image too dark. So where there's more shadowed areas, I'm going to be adding a little bit more, but being careful not to overpower the image. Now I decided to add a little detail above the nose and I didn't really like it very much, so you're going to see I'm going to get rid of that in a little bit. So now I'm back in with my C3, going over those stroke marks again, just blending it a little bit. I blended that little part over the nose and I'm just completing, sort of filling in the areas. I did take my colorless blender there and sort of run it over that area by the nose to get rid of the color. Going back in now with this lighter gray marker and with my colorless blender I'm creating some white areas. So you can see it's very, very soft. I then went in with these markers to color up the ears, the pads on the feet, and the nose. And that's really um, all the coloration I'm going to be sharing with you because I do want to um, share how I did the background and I didn't want my video to be too long. So if you want to um, find out what colors I used for the rest of the image, I'll have that on my blog and I'll link to that in the video. So here I just went over the fur again with um, a very light gray marker and now we're going to be starting the background. So I'm using a Prismacolor pencil and you can see that I am going right around sort of the edge of the image and putting a pretty solid um, line right around it. So you want your line to be very uniform around the image and you want quite a bit of color there because we're going to be going in with Gamsol and a blending stump and we're going to be sort of dissolving that color with the Gamsol and then sort of spreading it out um, away from the image so that you get a very diffuse sort of background. So this first step is important. Make sure you get all the areas covered. And now I have my Gamsol and a medium sized blending stump and you can see I'm going in where the color is and I'm dissolving it. I'm using sort of circular motion and then I'm sort of blending away from the image. I did put a piece of paper underneath there because my mat was a little sort of bumpy and that was affecting how I was coloring it so that's why that piece of paper is there. So you can see I'm just dissolving the color and then blending it away. You really want it to fade almost to nothing. You don't want to see like a harsh line anywhere. You want it to be very, very even. So I'm just working my way around the image. 
I like to use this technique when I want to create a background for stamps and I don't really want to mask the image. Um, it's just easier to do it with the Prismacolor pencils. And particularly for an image like this where there are so, like there's little curlicues of the fur and the whiskers, um, it gets harder. You don't really want to cover those up. So I find this technique really simple and fast. You don't have to cut anything out. So I'm just working my way around. And we'll be adding multiple colors to this. So this is like the first layer. It's sort of like the base. Um, it's a muted gray, blue, I would say. It's not a vibrant blue. So now that that's all done, I'm going to go in with my next pencil. I'm going to make sure everything is nicely blended. And then I'm going to add this pencil. So I'm sort of filling in those wider areas around. And you can see I didn't press hard. I did a very sort of light scoring over the image. And I'm using a larger blender blending stump to sort of dissolve all that together. Then I'm going in with this sort of turquoise color. So this is a brighter color. I'm adding a little bit more of it and you can see that it's sort of brightening up the sky a little bit, making it look less sort of, um, how can I say, flat because the colors are, are blending in. I'm going to be adding some yellow here on the top and you can see my paper's getting a little bit wet where you can see it's a bit darker. That isn't the pencil, it's the Gamsol. It's going to evaporate and lighten up. I added some yellow along the sides as well. And again, just using a very big blending stump to sort of blend it all away. Adding some white here and there. Again, so you're just building color on top of color and it just makes the background look so pretty. I did decide I wanted a little bit more yellow here and there. Then I'm going to add green to the bottom and again just blend that all out. And then I'm going to go in and just darken up the eyes and a few little areas with a dark gray pencil. I'm adding little highlights to the eyes with a white gel pen and a few little dots here and there. And now I'm creating my card base, just scoring a piece of Nina in half or cutting it in half and then scoring that in half to create my card base. I am going to cut a nice sort of scalloped frame with Nina again. I'm using this, I think this is called the Madison Avenue by Mama Elephant. I'll link everything at the bottom of the video. Creates a very nice um, scalloped frame. And I'm going to be using these new um, brush script alphabet dies from Whimsy. These are gorgeous. I love them. So what I do is I just keep everything attached and I just cut everything out at the same time. I find that easier. Um, and then I'll just always keep my extras that I'm not using. I'll keep them in a little pouch. So I'm going to be coloring them up using the same blues that I used to color the sky. Um, I'm going to be using those colors to color up the alphabet. It's easier to keep them sort of all stuck in the paper. And I will have to go back because I need, I'm making the word or spelling the word Easter, I'll need two E's so I will have to go back and cut another E and do the exact same thing. So once I have all the color down I'm going to take a blending stump and just blend it all together. You can see I kept the darker colors towards um, the edges of the, the, the letter and then I'm just blending it and you get sort of a graduated color. And you can always go back and add more color if you need. Then I'll just pop these out and you can see how pretty they are. And they are going to match my background beautifully. So here you can see everything is set up. I did put that frame on with some foam tape and now I'm just going to be gluing down the letters. And I sort of 
because they're so whimsical, I didn't want them to be like in a straight line. So you can see they're sort of staggered a little bit and it just makes, I find it makes the card look so cute. So I'm almost done here. And I love these dies. I love these alphabet dies because um, they also have like a number set in the brush script and a lowercase set as well. So you, you can create so many beautiful titles and sentiments with them. So now I'm just adding some clear rhinestones to my card. This again adds texture and interest. And I'm going to go ahead with my white Sharpie and add some white dots to the sky as well. And again, this just makes everything sort of um, pop a little bit more, adds depth and texture to your card. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, seeing how I created this card. A full list of supplies and links to those supplies can be found below this video on YouTube or my blog. Thanks for watching.